The first thing I want to talk about is safety, because the initial inspiration for building something like this was the fact that these little brushless whoops came with this B core board that just happened to be really reliable and I wanted to see how far I could push it and it turns out I could push it really really far and my thought was to only have this little 1S thing and transfer the whoop directly onto this frame and it'll fly awesome and I could fly it anywhere around people and whatnot and nobody's going to care because you can't hear it and it's so tiny and it can't cause any problems. However, I have <laughs> like a box full of brushless whoops. I have not found a single whoop that's a worthwhile direct transfer onto this frame. And the 1103 builds with 2S are just so much more fun that I almost want to just discontinue support for anything smaller than 1103 because the 1103 build is just so much better. And building one of these things only costs like 125, 130 bucks with the best parts. So it's like, it's very cost effective as well. But the reason I want to talk about safety is because when you put 2S on this thing and you push the, the all-up weight up to 65, 70, 75 grams, and it's really freaking fast on 2S, safety, again, comes into question. So I've actually run this thing into myself. I run a lot of these things into myself a number of times with different weights, different batteries, different battery powers. And um, I have I've found that with myself, first of all, on 1S, you pretty much have to run one of these things directly into somebody's eye to actually cause harm. It's really hard to cause harm. Even the props can't cut anything. Like I put it directly on delicate skin and I couldn't cut. I just scuffed the skin. So 1S is just supremely safe no matter what. And the performance is still good. However, 2S performance is just so much better than 1S. On 1S, you just don't have a lot of throttle feel because it's just 1S. You just can't expect to get too much. When you move up to 2S on even an 0803 motor or an 0802 motor, it gets a lot faster, but your, your all-up weight also goes up to about 65 grams. Now, on an 0803 or 0804, one of those old 08 motors, it's still pretty safe on 2S. Once you get up to 1103 on 2S, it starts getting really powerful, like really powerful, and it can hurt quite a bit. I bruised my, I didn't bruise, I, I <laughs> scraped up my leg pretty hard running into it, and um, so if you're going to be running 2S, which is what I recommend on 1103, you should consider that it's not anymore 100% public safe. However, that being said, it is so much more fun on 2S with a proper build that I almost want to discontinue support for the smaller motors. So what I've done is the new frames that are going to be coming, will, the four-hole pattern on the frame will also support the Amox Eno 1103 motor, the three-hole pattern, as well as four-hole patterns for all the various uh, 1103 motors out there. I think they all pretty much have the same four -hole, similar four-hole four -hole patterns that will work. I will still have the three-hole pattern, as you see here, because it is a much nicer little pattern, and it will still continue to support the Moxino motor as well, because it does make a nice little build. But I would recommend everybody just get the four-hole pattern moving forward, because that's just better. It doesn't matter which one you order, they all work. And still, the Moxino motor, to me, I, I've tried a bunch of them now, this still is it's the best motor, and that's the next thing I'll talk about. So, I have now tested the B4 board with um, 1105 motors, 1106 motors, 1104 motors, and I don't know how this thing just keeps dishing out the power. I, I don't even know its limit yet, but it has yet to give me a single problem across now almost two dozen builds, <laughs> and it's just been absolutely stellar. I'm really, truly impressed with this. And as far as I know, the new Mobula that's coming out, the Mobula HD, has a 3S B core board. Now, I do not see the need for 3S at all on this kind of a quad. And I'll tell you why in a second when I talk about the battery connector. But I just want to say that 1105s are totally fine. You can double the motor weight. That's totally fine. Just recognize that adding weight to something like this that's this light, it does impact the performance. However, you can push the weight up as high as 100 grams even and it will maintain its ability to fly well and give you good performance. However, the props begin to suffer at anything past about 90 grams. 90 grams is really the limit for these props. Now, the KV of the motor is also somewhat important. The Amox Eno 7500 KV motors tend to be perfect with respect to the battery sizes that we run, which is somewhere from 300 to 900 milliamps, I would say, is the recommended battery for this kind of a quad. Once you get past 7,800, 8,000, 85, these are 8,700 kV motors, you can generate enough 
amp draw to actually start hurting your batteries. Like you start getting voltage warnings early. With the Moxino motors, I can pretty much peg the throttle at max throttle and fly around for like a minute and a half and I get no battery warning on a 450 milliamp. So that's what I like to see. The performance difference with going up in motor height, like an 1105, is minuscule. It's almost nothing. Yes, the throttle control is slightly better. Yes, the punch is just ever so slightly better. But this prop, is, the, which is the prop that I'm really focusing on, there is no point to these larger motors. The 1103 motor and 7500 kV with the construction that the Moxino motors are, are just fantastic. There, there's no need for more. It's a great motor. I know that there's another, there's a couple other motors coming as well. Looking forward to those, but okay, let's move on. So the next thing I have is, are the props that Gemfan has been working on and sent me. And so they have a replica of the, not a replica, King Kong apparently copied Gemfan, which copied somebody else, whatever. They all copied Parrot, which I think was the original maker of this prop. Anyways, Gemfan has a version of this prop in the different they sent it to me in different materials so i asked for it in different materials they have this one material they call it the master material which i really like a lot because it's got nice stiffness to it as well um they sent it to me as well the the stiffer material is a whole lot better it really is a whole lot better however Gemfan really screwed up on this design because uh the pitch on it seems to be just ever so slightly lower than the king kong blade so it just does not have the same speed does not have the same punch it's not even more efficient. So unfortunately, they're gonna to have to fix that. Um, HQ is also working on this prop. I have just asked them to just straight copy the King Kong 65 millimeter prop and just make the hole diameter correct. I found that cutting the hole diameters yourself actually is not great because you can never get it perfectly centered. And these things are spinning really fast. So you do get vibrations no matter what. The um, gem fan prop that does have the correct size hole in it, it is, it's just so much smoother in the air. But unfortunately, it just doesn't have the same performance as the King Kong prop, so that's not going to work out. They also made me the prop in the Tri-Blade version. Now, this is a 3D print of the Tri-Blade version, so it's not quite exactly what would potentially ship. However, I found that these motors, the 1103 at least, even the 1105, they get overloaded like really easily and you can feel that overload as well because once you get past a certain throttle point the throttle really doesn't do anything anymore it just doesn't respond to anything anymore so i don't think the tri-blade version of this prop is going to work out for this class there are two videos i found on youtube with people that were doing um, thrust tests that also found similar findings because apparently racer star did make a tri-blade version of the king kong prop it just didn't catch on didn't become very popular next thing i want to point out is the uh, b core uh, flight controller board i do not recommend this i did get a couple of them i soldered them up i actually sent them to people in some of the packages when when they bought them somebody from overseas is going to get a, a build of the b core board in it i don't recommend this board because I have just read too many responses from people that have had things burn out, and when it burns out, it takes the motor with it. So I did solder one up, but I didn't even bother flying it. I just replaced it with a B core board. Uh, sorry, uh, a Crazy B board. These Crazy B boards are just phenomenal. They really are fantastic. I I can't find a flaw with the function. There's a lot of other flaws, but I can't find a flaw with the function. Now the next actual big point that I want to show you and, and make here is with this quad here. So I was testing various powertrains and then I started testing the XT30 connector. Now I've read before that adding an XT30 to a 2S whoop or something does increase the performance quite a bit but I am shocked at how much the number one upgrade to this little thing has been just swapping out the connector for an XT30. Immediately I had about 30 or 40 percent more punch, maybe 30 percent more speed and 30 or 40 percent more flight time like it doesn't even make sense it doesn't it doesn't make sense how much gains there are to be had by just switching a dumb little connector now after that i continued on with that kind of theme and i swapped out to uh, 20 gauge wires instead of the 22 gauge wires that it comes with and those are the w thickest wires that i can actually fit on the solder pad and that again gave me a good boost in performance and then i went and soldered the motors directly onto the board it's pretty easy to get those um, pins off, the, the motor plugs off. You just you pull the plastic pin up and it just pulls off the pins and then you just desolder all the pins. Desoldering the pins is a little bit annoying, but it's not that bad. Once you do that, you have the thick wires, you have the XT30, you got the motors directly soldered and you're using a 2S battery. Now you're getting the maximum performance for this thing. And man, it's, it's really 
a night and day difference compared to what I was running with the PH2 connector on something like this one. This one was, is one that I haven't flown in a while. It has the Moxino motors, but it has the motor connectors and it has the PH2 um, harness connector, which I do not recommend at all anymore. This build that I have here is the best build that I have made so far, and it's the one I recommend. It's incredible with the um, the GMB 450 milliamp battery. It's just, I'm really floored at the performance of this thing. So if this is what I recommend to build, I'm trying to kind of make this really easy for everybody and make it a standard. The dilemma is that how on earth do you charge a 2S battery in the field. The inability to use chargers like this has been the most annoying thing, I think, for me. And just it's just annoying not to have the ability to just plug a battery in and, and charge it on the go. You can kind of have like those little travel chargers, like an ISDT charger, and then um, have a balance board. But then you have to parallel charge all of your batteries. So that means you have to use them all, and then you have to charge them all. You can't use them while you're charging. So I had this bright idea to use the MR30 connector, which is an XT30 by three connector, as you can see here. And this is the battery side, and this is a great connector. And I thought, oh cool, I can make an, a, a 2S battery and not need a balance plug because I can charge it because I have access to all three pins. And so I made this little wire harness and I plugged it into my charger and lo and behold, I'm a complete moron and didn't realize that the batteries are connected in the middle. So one of these leads actually has 2S voltage going through it and there is no way to charge your 2S battery on these little 1S uh, charge boards. Now, a couple of people from the community have pointed out that there are there, it's, it's not that difficult to actually swap out one of these these uh these buck boost kind of converters that are actually charging the whole thing for a 2s version and then have one row of 2s ability and one row of 1s ability and they'll just balance appropriately along the way however somebody else actually found a travel charger that's a little bit bigger than this but it takes a lipo and it has four charging lanes which means you can charge four batteries independent four 2s batteries independently which is fantastic I'm hoping to get one of those soon, as soon as China gets back into service. And then let's talk about batteries. So the GNB uh, 450 milliamp battery is really the uh, standard battery that I would recommend. It's been fantastic. I do have a couple of the Tattoo batteries. They are not any better. They're pretty much exactly the same as the GNB battery. I also have the multi, uh, sorry, Mini Star, the China Hobby Line battery. This battery is not good. It doesn't give you, the, this just is not good. You don't get the same amount of performance. You don't get the same kind of power. It also weighs like seven grams more or six grams more than the GNB. So there's no point in buying this one. The GNB is like seven or eight dollars. The good news is that I did make a couple of um, 1S batteries into 2S batteries. They were GNB 450 milliamp batteries and they do perform the same as the GMB 450 milliamp. And surprisingly, it only weighs half a gram less than the prepackaged one from GMB, which looks bigger to me, but I guess it's not. So that's good news there. I also happen to have a 980 milliamp battery, 2S battery from Hubson, and I was getting about six minutes of flight time on this battery. However, the the um, C rating is, a, is super low. The C rating doesn't really matter, but the battery performance overall is super low. However, I wasn't getting any battery voltage readings until the very end of my flight. That flight is in the video description below. So if you want to watch that, you can watch that. Also, I want to show you, so the, the last frontier for something like this, for this kind of a build, is to finally cram the split on there and I have a dozen designs to try and cram this stupid thing on there and it's just none of them are up to my standards none of them are up to par it just doesn't fit nicely with the boards and everything just doesn't work out really nicely and the only reason why I'm even considering that before I wasn't considering it at all but now once I flew it around with this 900 milliamp battery with an 88 gram all up weight with these 1103 motors I realized holy crap this thing is awesome even up to 90 grams so let's put the split on there because i can i can get this thing below 90 grams with a 450 milliamp battery i'm also already getting three four minutes on this 450 milliamp so i can probably get two minutes easy on uh, a quad with the split camera and my original idea when i was designing the split was to actually have the ability to put two cameras on there the split as well as the little tiny micro cam here because the the view from the split in the fpv is just awful but i don't think that's going to work out because it's just not it's just, it's just too small of a platform to do that. So this is one of my designs that I had designed to put the battery on top. And I have designed a couple of 3D mount things to 
actually slip onto this top plate here and put the battery on top. And the way this works and my, my idea about this is that this doesn't use any standoffs. It actually just uses these, these, the steel M2 screws. And then you put like a lock nut on there and then you put the top plate on there and you put another lock nut on there. And that's how the standoff works. And the camera can sit in between the two screws and that'll make it a much smaller platform. I can keep the frame really small and light uh, as a result. However, when I tested the um, battery on top, with the toilet hawk <laughs> or the tiny hawk uh, with the battery on top. The difference is actually not that drastic with things this light. It, it definitely, you can definitely feel it. And especially when I put this 900 million battery, which by the way, weighs like eight grams more than the quad itself. I definitely felt it when I was flying around, but it wasn't that bad. It wasn't to the point where I was really concerned and then I thought, oh no, this is unflyable. I definitely want to put the battery on top. Yeah, you do get more control. However, if I put the split camera on top, I think it's going to counterbalance everything really nicely with the 450 milliamp 2S. So I think that's going to work out really well. I'm for now abandoning the idea of putting the split, uh, sorry, the um, battery on top because I'm really laser focused on trying to get that split version out because once that that is possible and it works and it's the size and it's the build and it's easy to make and everything is all good then I'm going to be really happy and I do expect Fox here to Fox here to run cam somebody I don't know why they still make these cameras cameras they're, they're don't, they don't compare to GoPros they should just skip the box two and whatever the run cam four or whatever it is and just go straight to the split camera because that's the ultimate goal <laughs> so just put it in the split and that's what I'm expecting to happen so I'm really trying to get this frame finished so that it's ready for that and i'm really hoping it comes soon lastly uh people that got there or are getting their orders i forgot to pack the um race wire in the orders of under 705 if your order 705 or under i forgot to pack the race wire so i taped it to the inside of the package lid please don't throw away the packaging check the lid it's in there and i'm also going to be discontinuing the mini race wire too because there's honestly no point. I don't recommend the 080 whatever builds. The 2S1103 builds are not expensive and they are just so much more fun to fly, even on 1S. I mean, I would even though I recommend 0804 on 1S, forget that. Just get the 1103 motors because eventually you're gonna wanna run 2S. So just get 1103 and run 1S on it. Even the high, get a high KV 1103, run 1S on it, enjoy that. And then when you're ready, skip to 2S and then cut your, your throttle endpoint all the way down and you're gonna have a 2S squad and it's gonna be much, much more fun. So the race wire is gonna be discontinued when I do run out of it, which is probably gonna be in the next 50 or so orders. Uh, China New Year is still going on. They're not gonna come back into service for probably another couple weeks. So I don't expect to have frames anytime soon. Probably beginning of March is when I expect frames to start shipping. I also will be getting a lot of the Moxino motors. Me and Piraflip pretty much ordered the entire next batch of their motors because they are just fantastic. Um, there are a couple more motors coming, but stay tuned. And I really hope to get the split one out the door. And yeah, that's it for now. Can't think of anything else right now. Don't forget to floss your teeth. More to come. Sorry for all the delays from Chinese New Year. It really is annoying. But I hope you guys enjoy this build and stay tuned. Bye.